How's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to build a photorealistic flying saucer, a, a small little flying saucer. And from that you are UFO and from that you can build even bigger ones. But my goal for this is to try to do projects that I think are fun or, or projects that um, that you might get a kick out of. So that's what uh, we're going to do. So before we start, there's something you need to get before you start with the tutorial. And the first thing is you need to go to a website called free pbr.com and go under metals and then download this metal one called metal plates panel PBR material and it looks like this and I just downloaded this first one this 13 megabit one and it's a zip file so just download it and unzip it and have that available to go then you need to also go to this website called hdrhaven.com and if you look under hdris under outdoor category you'll find this one called flower road so go ahead and download the 8k one that comes uh, i think it just comes i don't even think you have to unzip it and so when you're done with that you'll have two files one uh, one folder one file and one folder you have one with your five maps and then you'll also have uh, images maps and then you'll have the HDR image and that's what you need to start so there's uh, five of those there's ambient inclusion your base color metallic normal map and then your roughness map so there's five maps and then you've also got your HDR image and then once you've got those all downloaded and ready to go then you can just jump into to modeler now uh, here we are in modeler we're ready to go the first step is we're going to come down here on T and go to new and we're just going to call this uh we'll just call it saucer i've done this a few times already so we'll just call it saucer four or four uh, there you go we'll just leave everything at default and we'll hit create and that creates our uv map and that's just sitting off in the background right now then we're going to come over here click on ball and then we're going to click and drag and make our well it starts as a ball but it's going to be like a saucer if you click n or hit here you bring up the numeric panel and the main thing is you want to make sure the x and z axis are the same so here we're not quite right so what i can do is just type in 3.8 and so we want a perfectly symmetrical and then what we come over here we can come over here in the side view the right view and just drag this up a little bit like that okay and then we'll click here where it says make uvs and then we can close out of that then we hit enter and we have our disk. Now the other thing we can do to try to add a little bit more geometry to this is if we hit O for options, where it says sub patch division, we can just change that to six and hit enter and then close that out. If we come over and hit tab, uh, it's we got a nice smooth disk there. And hit enter, we can, that's really looks great right there. And that's gonna be the base of our flying saucer and if you want to see what the uv map looks you can come over here in the top view and you hit uv uh, uv texture and there's our uv map which is kind of great so lightwave actually unwraps that for us so that's uh we're good to go with that and that's basically uh, a 2d representation of the 3d surface that's great so what we want to do then is we want to save this save object and we can just save this as saucer for i guess let's get it up and go save our object and then we come up here in the corner and we just send object uh, to layout and now we're in layout and there is our object okay so the one thing i didn't do is i didn't give the surface a name i could have given the surface a name but in this case it's just going to be if I click on the surface editor here, it's just gonna be the default, which is fine. So now the whole thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna add those all those images to our the surface of our, our disk. And to do that, the first thing we wanna do is if I hit, before I get too carried away, I wanna hit D on the keyboard for display. And I just wanna make sure that my color space is set to sRGB, and it is. So make sure that's taken care of. Going back into the surface editor, if I click there, if I hit smoothing, it gives us this nice smooth surface there. Oh, the other thing that we probably want to do is if I hit uh, D again, we can change this to vertical so we can double vertical because this is a nice view where we can see what's going on. So what we can do here is change this to camera view. We're in camera view, okay? And then we can change this to VPR. And it kind of gives us an image of what we're 
what we're looking at. The first thing we're gonna do is bring in all our images. So we come up in here to the image editor and we're gonna go load. And we just navigate to our file where our images are. And you can just hit control A, select them all and go open. And then you can also go load and also grab that HDR image, the flower road one and go open and then you've got that. So you've got all of your images. And then before we get going and start lining these up, setting these onto the surface here, we just need to adjust our color space. So on the base color, we'll just click this and we're just gonna set the color space to sRGB. And then for these one, press control and just click these, select these four, and we can set those to linear. This one, the, um, the, the uh, HDRI image, you also wanna set that to linear. And that's all we need to do there. So now once we have that all set, we can close this out. And now we can go in back into the surface editor. And this is where it starts getting a little messy. It actually took me a while to get my mind around all this too. So uh, you might have to watch this video a couple times. But anyway, we go, we're gonna go into the, the node editor. Then we're gonna come here, add node, 2D, and we're gonna go click image. And this pops up. And what you do on this is you just double click this and it brings up uh, the image here. And we're just gonna set some parameters on this. I don't know what that is, let's get rid of that. We'll hit two and two for our tiles. For our mapping, we want it to be the UV map. There's our saucer four. And that's all we need to set on this. And then we just need to bring in, we're gonna just bring in our color image, which is right there, our base color. We're done. Then we wanna, what we're gonna do is close this and we're gonna cl right click this and copy it. And we're gonna go paste. And there's another one of those and we got so we have two of these right okay so let's see that's one so this is number two so we double click on this one and we're going to come in here and we're going to load in the ambient occlusion like that go ambient occlusion and then we're going to close that out we're going to come over to math double click math and we're going to go to vector and we're going to go to multiply and double click that and we're just going to what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these together and we're going to go one goes into A, this one goes into A. And if you want to know what all these are, these are just numbers. They, these are, I know it can seem, uh, data types can seem confusing, but really all it is is numbers. And if you want to know what numbers you're dealing with, a vector is just three numbers. So if you come over here and just hover over it, it shows you. So you might think, well, why am I going to use color over, over Luma? Why wouldn't I use Luma? Well, it's, a, it's pretty much the same value. It is the same value, but it's just as a vector with three of them, right? So you can either, you can use Luma or color, but it's a vector, so you might as well just use all three. Anyway, that's kind of a cool little tool there. And now if we scoot this off to the side and we drag this, you can see the initial effect of that, of adding that, okay? Now we have, uh, believe it or not, we've got three more maps to add. So what we do is we, can, we have already copied it. So I just need to right click and paste. And there's a number one and double click this one. And we're just going to change this to metallic. And that's all good. And then so we're going to drag this from the Luma into the metallic. And then what you can do is you can close those and give yourself a little bit more space. Then I can right click and paste again, double click. And then I'm going to change this to we got that's metallic right and then uh roughness map and we'll close this and this one is going to go from the luma to roughness you can see uh, each time i'm adding something it keeps making the surface look better and better and more detailed and have more depth and texture so we've got our four maps now the next one is a normal map so we're going to have to go add a node just for that come over here normal map and there's that one so we're just going to set this one up real fast so we double click this uh, these parameters haven't been set so we're going to click two and two go uv map and saucer four and then we're going to load in our normal map what's cool about this is this one is just it's clear where it plugs in because it's just normal to normal and you can see that even adds more, more and more texture. That's our setup for applying our five, uh, our five images maps to our surface. And then what we do is we end up getting a surface that looks pretty cool, just essentially right out of the box. Now to get a, a better look at this, if I click on object down here, I can come over here, click where it says position and on my scroll wheel on my mouse, I can, I can turn this a little bit. 
to give us a little bit better look at things. Now what we're going to do is the main thing is, of course, a lot of this has to do with lighting and there's, it's really, you can't really separate the lighting from the surface. It's an interactive process between the light is determining what you see is based on the a combination of the light and the surface. So you really can't separate them out. So right now I only have one light in the scene and this is a, a distant light, but we can actually use that HDR image to provide the lighting for our scene, which actually makes it a lot more photorealistic because the object ends up reflecting environment. Whereas this is just, you know, we don't know where that light's really coming from. You know, we see a little bit of light on it, but we don't really know. So what we're going to do there is um, the first thing we're going to do, let's load in that image. So we come to backdrop, we go to add, we can turn off this for right now because we don't really need it. And we can go add uh, environment, textured environment. We double click this. You always got to kind of drill your way now, <laughs> go down these rabbit holes. The projection is going to be spherical and then we're going to pull in that image and it should be on our list. There it is right there. And see, it looks, it's not quite right because it's not going down the right axis and once we switch it to Y that straightens that out. And now we've got our image but we've got we've got a lot of noise fireflies going on here. So there's some settings that we can tweak to fix that pretty quick. That's a whole separate uh, world but basically it has to do with making sure you got your settings all correct. We can play around with some things on this set, but that's a whole separate tutorial as far as getting this um, the image right with the the minimum amount of samples. So the fewer you want to use the right amount of samples. You don't want to oversample because that increases your rendering time but you'll see that you it does pay. There's certain settings that can clean that up like really quick. So the first one to you can try. So we have just one light and then we've got this image but it's not really reflecting the background. To do that, what we can do is we, if we go to item up here, we can go light and we can add an environment light. But you know, rather than do that, if we don't like this light, we can just swap this light out. So if we click down here, go light, go properties. And so instead of having that distant light, I can just change it to an environment light. There's, there's some things about Lightwave that is, uh, it's like a lot of cupboards in your grandmother's house or something, but you may like that that additional reflection that you were getting from the, from that distant light. So you, we can bring it back if you want to bring it back, but let's just light it with the environment light and see where that gets us uh, first. So if you come in here, let's see, we go to click render up here and we go into GI options. You'll see there's a sample backdrop there. So there's, look at that. There's two sample backdrops. There's a sample backdrop here and a sample back. You got to choose one or the other. You can experiment, but you probably want to get rid of this one. So we'll get rid of that one. Doesn't clean up our image very much. We can try boosting this up a little bit, the light samples, and that, that doesn't seem to help us either. So what's going to clean up those fireflies? That's the, the main question, right? So what we can do is let's try this. Let's go into surface editor and we go to shading model. I'm going to change this from ray trace and backdrop to just ray trace. And look at that. It cleaned it up. It really cleaned it up. It still looks a little grungy, but I think it's supposed to look a little grungy. We can try to zoom in on that a little bit uh, more. And we may want to add the uh, distant light back, but just by doing that, that got rid of the, the fireflies. The other thing is you can also, if you hit interpolated, I know some people don't like to use interpolated, but that actually helps a lot sometimes too. You can also try using this one. This one helps sometimes to boost this up. You can play with some of these settings and see. The other thing that we can do, there's so many places that you have to go to get your settings correct. But if you come into camera, that's another place where we can try to clean things up a little bit. To me, it's looking fairly flat and uh, mattish, I guess. I don't know if that's a word, but we can, we can try to increase that a little bit here and then but let's, uh, let me go into camera and other properties. Okay, so the one thing we want to do is put this to HD high definition. So that's 1920 by 1080. And then we have our adaptive sampling on there. And that's the only thing I would say to do. I, I think that's looking pretty good. Let me, if I go to object, let me pull this a little closer to the camera. Let's see here, I click on the Z. Take a closer look at this thing. See how it's looking. Looks like it's cleaning up pretty good, actually. I, I think it's looking. Now, one thing we could do if we did like that, that reflection is we could go back in and add a light to this. So let's, let's go into uh, item 
and add a, add a lot of the light. So we'll add that distant light back because that basically mimics the sun. And you can see how much shinier it looks once you add that, that distant light back in there. So that's a big, so one thing you can do is if you go into the scene editor here, you can toggle these on and off and see, see that's, that's one kind of look. And actually I'd like, if I add the distant light, that really brings out the metallic kind of shiniest part to it. And believe it or not, that's where I'm going to leave this uh, tutorial for right now. Uh, this is a, should be enough to get you started. What you need to do is experiment with a lot of these settings, play around with them, and trust your eyes. But try not to uh, over adjust any one sample. Just do one setting at a time, keeping an eye, an eye on what effect it's having. And eventually you're going to come with a, a recipe that uh, not only looks good, but also gives you a pretty quick render. Just for fun, Let's, let's see how long this takes to render out. So if we click up here on render and we go render frame, let's see how long this takes. I think I, I have on this uh, computer, I have a 1070. So it's, uh, it's no slouch. Let's see, I have an Intel i7, I think. And uh, you can tell where, where are we at? I hate to <laughs> burn up. Oh my gosh. See, it's saying it's gonna take about a about a minute. So I might want to go back and adjust down some of my samples because it looks like if I were to render out, let's say a 10 second, let's say an eight second clip of this thing spinning around, it would be 120 frames. Let's say hundred and well, let's say if I put 240 down here, right? right? You change your frames. Well, it's not letting me do it right now while it's rendering. You can see it's going to take it taking about maybe two minutes to render this out but that's pretty big in the frame too so so that's pretty big if i made it smaller in the frame it would probably render faster so i honestly didn't plan on having the the disc the saucer that close into the the camera let's see where we're at at time so it's taking a minute and yeah it's going to take about two minutes so anyway if i were to render out let's say 120 it would take quite a while so I might have to go back and look at my settings and see what I could pull down if that was just taking too much time to render out oh and there it's I, there should be a, a ding or something like on a on an oven but here here is the here's the image and I have to say even if I over adjusted some of the settings I'd say that looks pretty darn clean to me like I don't see any noise in there and I'd say that looks pretty darn good. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any uh, render settings or suggestions, I, I'm totally open to hear uh, to hearing them. This is a uh, interactive thing of um, hopefully you're getting something out of this and if you have something to share, I hope you would share any tips or tricks you have in the comments as well. Constructive criticism or ideas, that's what I really appreciate. So I hope I can help you to learn Lightwave and, I, and I'm open to hearing tips and tricks from everyone else myself. So thank you very much. Have a great day and I will talk to you again.